to my studio, thanks for dropping by. Today, I will be working in a fairly new medium to me, watercolor. This is only the second piece I have completed without a tutorial. Considering that, and the fact I used an unfamiliar paper, I think the end result actually turned out quite well. The last time I touched watercolor was several months ago, so I needed to re-familiarize myself with the workings of the medium. That was a challenge in itself. Since watercolor has a mind of its own, I really needed to find a good balance between letting it do what it was going to do in a somewhat controlled manner. Now, I know those two things don't usually go hand in hand, but hey, if you know me, there has to be some kind of control to avoid any type of meltdown. I mostly worked in a wet on wet method meaning I would wet the paper, then apply the pigment and let it blend and move. This allows for a very loose painting. I soon found that I was really struggling with controlling this and getting the results I wanted. So I moved into a semi-wet application in which I felt I had more control and was able to move around a bit better. In this application, I sometimes lightly dab in the area, or sometimes not, and apply the pigment, then dipped my brush in the water to move the pigment around. This worked really well in the heavily pigmented areas. I would then pull the pigment from those areas into the others to create the lovely fades and blends. While this might not be the best way to accomplish this, it is what worked for me and I felt like I had more control over the medium, yet able to create a looser appearance than I normally would. If the areas got too dark, I was able to lift off the pigment while it was still wet to lighten it a bit. I noticed as the watercolor dried, I would sometimes have rings because I did not have water in that area to fade out. After it dried, I would then take a wet brush to soften those rings and edges, as this is not something I wanted for this artwork. On the right side, there came a point where I really lost the sides of the owl's face, but found it easy to fix by reactivating it with water and lifting and moving the pigment without any problems. I think one of the most challenging things for me was letting go and allowing the pigment to do its thing. I love the loose style, but I also struggled to achieve it without a fight breaking out in my head between complete tight control realism to a loose semi-realistic dreamy type feel. Yet one more skill I need to practice. Another challenge for me in this piece was having the patience to let things dry. When I art, I like to just keep going until it is finished or I need to stop for the day. Having to wait for layers to dry, I have to find something else to do, which is not my usual workflow and I find disruptive to the process. But when working with wet mediums, it is a necessary step in order to achieve the best outcome and less struggle along the way. After getting most of the larger areas of the owl established, I then went in with a small brush and used a wet on dry technique to start putting in some of the details. Now, I didn't want to go too crazy with this, and I had to get a happy medium of not too much versus not enough and looking sparse. I then used a comb or a rake brush to create some of the interesting and unexpected textures. I found I really like this technique and will use it in future pieces. It really adds to the overall appearance of the watercolor. What type of brushes do you like to use and what unexpected results have you achieved? Let me know in the comments below. I used a bit of white gouache for the whitest areas. I did this for two reasons. While some areas I did leave the paper showing for white areas, which is the usual practice for watercolors, the paper was an off-white to start with, and I really wanted the bright white highlights. So essentially, I used the paper as a lighter mid-tone and was able to work both lighter and darker. I think this decision created much more depth since I increased my value range within the piece. This wide value range is one of the aspects that creates dimension in art. I did a few splatters here and there that is common in watercolor. I don't know why, but I really love the splatter look. It is easy to get out of control with this, so keeping it in check is key. I created a few near the beginning and then adding more as I worked. This seemed to work well and made them appear more of part of the painting than just as an afterthought since some of them got worked into the piece. 
This is something else I will keep in mind as I do future pieces. Overall, it was nice to jump in and create a loose piece like this again and look forward to honing my skills in this medium and doing more looser style artwork. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing to learn more about my techniques and processes. I'm Wendy O'Brien. Thanks for watching and until next time, keep on arting.